Through its evolution, football has become part of its lore. From the youngest of young and right on through, it is intertwined with this American holiday. And tonight, two Eastern powers continue the tradition. The Mountaineers of West Virginia battle the Orangemen of Syracuse. from a list of many will reign supreme. A few still have the opportunity to influence the vote. One of those is West Virginia's Major Harris. With the nation as his audience, the moment is now. Tonight, for the very last time, Major Harris takes aim at the Heisman. ESPN's college football special. Tonight, the Mountaineers of West Virginia, number 17 ranked in the nation, coming to town to take on the Orangemen of Syracuse. Hello, everybody. Ron Franklin, along with Tim. Probably the most important thing of note as Ismail and David Walker go back to the dual safety is the fact that offensively, George Dillion, the offensive coordinator, says we are a more confident football team in this latter part of the season than when you saw us earlier against Pitt. He said that knocked a lot of confidence out of our football team. Well, too, they had the more difficult part of their schedule was early in the season, Ron, and uh, since then they've been able to put some things together and decide that Bill Sharp was their quarterback, and he has been their number one quarterback. No questions asked. Since that point in the season, it's made a big difference. And they also have made up their mind that Michael Owens is going to carry the ball a lot more than he did early on, at least 20 times a ball game. Kadri Ismael, along with David Walker, back deep. And if you're asking, yes, he is the brother of the Rocket at Notre Dame. And here comes the kick. Very deep. This is going to come down to Ismail. Two yards deep, he'll return. Bangs hard as he crosses the 15, and he's out to the 20-yard line. Now there's Coach McPherson, and we normally would be giving you the starting lineups at this time as you look at his record being in his ninth season there with Syracuse, but we're going to keep it right here because you remember against Pittsburgh, he had a trick play. Over half the games on the opening kickoff, that's what the Orangemen like to do. Don Nealon knows that very well. I'm not going to be surprised if they come out in the prevent on this opening yeah, play. Right. Golly, it's a straight running play. Owen wards off one tackler in the backfield, and he is going to be shoved out of bounds for a loss. And now for tonight's diehard starting lineup. Bill Shar, the opener at quarterback, and behind him, Michael Owens and Dwayne Kennedy. The two wide receivers, the two Robs, Moore and Carpenter, they're great ones. The tight end, huge, Andre Dees, Andrew. John Flattery is the center for the two guards, McCummings and Bednars. And Mike Bernard and Turnell Sims are the offensive tackles. Andrew Dees, 6'6", 250 pounds at tight end. Char with his first throw of the evening. Far side of the field, has it complete Rob Moore. Out to the 34-yard line, good for 16 yards. Well, just as Major Harris is the man to stop for West Virginia, Rob Moore is the guy that the Mountaineers are going to have to stop as far as receivers go. He came in with 44 catches, single coverage. He hooked up in front of the zone there. And Shar, who's passing efficiency, finds him fifth in the nation right on the mark. Syracuse thinks that Rob Moore is the best at that position they've ever had here. Look as though Kinnon started a little early. Shar on the keeper takes it out to the 40-yard line on the option play. Let's meet the defensive starters for West Virginia. Jim Gray is the nose guard. The two tackles, Mike Fox, he's a great one, and Scott Summits. The outside backers, Brockman and Turnbull. On the inside, it's Chris Herring and Theron Ellis. In the secondary, Darren Fulton and Preston Waters. And Daryl Whitmore and Basil Proctor, the safeties.
straight ahead, Wayne Kennan, close to the first down. They're going to mark him down just across the 43 as Chris Herring, the left inside linebacker, comes up to make the stop. Problem Syracuse had early in the year, they didn't have an identity. They were trying to run similar plays, plays that were with them when McPherson was the quarterback two years ago, and they had to find out what type of a team they are. They have since found an identity over the last four games. They're averaging well over 400 yards a game in offense. They need inches. Full house backfield. They'll go with the running play. Owens, and it looked as though he got tripped, like a leg came up and knocked him down. Mike Fox makes the tackle, the left defensive tackle. Fox playing with an injury tonight. He is the best guy of those down three, Kevin. But he missed about 12 days because of a knee. He's had an injury. Here's Bednars and Sims on the right side. They do a job. But here you can see number 42 coming in on the right side. 49, excuse me, Chris Herring, the best linebacker on the West Virginia team. He's the one who piled it up and caused it to go for no gain. Short drop this time. Quick out goes again to Moore. Turns the corner. Inside the 40-yard line, and now a marker comes down. 15 yards. Right in front of the wide corner, Darrell Fulton giving him a lot of room over there. You see a penalty. There's going to be a face mask tacked on to this play. You cannot give Moore that kind of room. He's the wide corner playing him soft. Sharp finds him and hits him. Look at the room that number 14 has here. Shard takes a short drop. He's going to throw it around. Look at Darrell Fulton, how far off he is. Gives more time to turn around and almost outrun him. Has to grab the face mask and pull him down. It's going to be a penalty. So the penalty moves it just inside the 35-yard line. Moore now two catches for 31. With two tight ends. Goes inside the 30 in the vicinity of the 28-yard line. The Syracuse came up in a power formation. Two tight ends, Ron, and they're making Ronaldo Turnbull, the great outside linebacker, play over a tight end, and then they ran a counter back to the other side with Owens. Terrific blocking by Bernard and McCummings on that side, and of course Owens with a good run. Opening drive for the Orangemen. Glad to have you along in this Thanksgiving evening. Establish the inside and then give it to the great eye back and that's Owens Good one-on-one -on -one blocking see the seal blocking here and now watch Andrew Dees number 86 He pins him he makes the block on the outside. You're gonna see it here watch 86 with a hook block left of your screen Owens makes the cut. He seals him off. The gainer. Great vision by Owens. Gain of 15 again. Owens in a counter. Two, three, maybe four. In the vicinity of the 11th, the Ron Ellis, the right inside linebacker out of Norristown, PA, comes up to make the stop. George DeLeon, the offensive coordinator for Syracuse, told us earlier in the week that he would be disappointed and his guys could not handle the front of West Virginia. He felt that they could power him. This offensive line, beginning of the year, considered one of the best in the nation for Syracuse. The Orangemen need the five-yard line. Late to Kennan with the option. Shar, and he waited a little too long. That's nice defense on the part of West Virginia's Brockman and Turnbull are out there to make the stop. They don't want Shar to hold on to the football, right? They want him to pitch it. That's Syracuse. Well, well no, they want to. They, well, they would like to cover the pitch. Oh, Syracuse, right? Syracuse would like him to pitch it. Now, here, as you watch the replay, great job by Fox and Turnbull. He's 61 and 87. They tried to run to the short side of the field, but those are the two best players defensively for West Virginia. There wasn't enough room to block them. the middle 
complete to the running back, Kennan. At the six-yard line, he's going to be short of the first down as Herring covers him up immediately. Now decision time for Syracuse, fourth down. And no big decision as far as Coach Mack is concerned because John Biscuit, the field goal kicker, comes on from the near side. There will be a lot of points scored in this game tonight, Ron. And it could come down to a field goal, but I, I really believe it's going to be an offensive show. 24 yards on the attempt. No pass. And he is good. Biscuit now 13 of 17 on the season. And the Orangemen go on top, 3 to nothing. Quarterback's doing this. Low snap, a one hopper. Not only does he catch it, he gets it down, and Biscuit does exactly the right thing. He doesn't even want to know about the snap. He's coming to kick the ball. If it's there, he's going to kick it through, and it was. Now, well, a great opening drive for Syracuse. They would love to have had the touchdown, but they have three. And with nine minutes and 46 seconds left in this opening period, they have gone on the board first. Carl Hayes and James Jett back at the dual safety as Biscuit has it lined up at the 35. Freshman out of Shepherdtown, West Virginia. Three to nothing, and for the first time tonight, we get to see the Mountaineers on offense. Here's the kick. Hayes from the five. Whoa, is he tagged with a head-high stick at the 21-yard line. Major Harris, the starter at quarterback tonight. And behind him, Eugene Napoleon and Rico Tyler. The wide receivers, Reggie Rembert, he's a great one. And Greg Dykes. The tight end, Adrian Moss. The center is Jeff Price. And he's flanked by Scott Parker and Dale Wolfland. And the tackles, Jack Lynn, probably the best of the offensive linemen, and Matt Ratchet. Ron Franklin and Kevin Kiley. And it's great to have you along. And this, hard to believe, is the final Thanksgiving of 1980. That's right. That's right. I hadn't thought of that. Well, I wish you hadn't said that. You must be getting old. Harris. They keep him in the pocket. Yep, and he's going to go long for Rembert, his favorite target incomplete down at the 30-yard line. Sanquist was trying to cover, but he had a step and a half on it. Well, of course, the thing that Syracuse wants desperately to do is to make Major a drop-back quarterback. Right here, he's a rollout quarterback with plenty of time and that's not good. He has a cannon for an arm, and he loves to play indoors. It makes a big difference. He just overthrows Rembert, but you'll see him going up and down the field. A great, great arm. You know what you're talking about is Don Neal said at our meeting this morning. He said Major didn't want to leave here last night. It was <laughs> so much fun throwing indoors. No win. Draw play to Napoleon, and he will be wrapped up. David Bavaro, the first man to make the stick, and then covered up by the remainder of that front. Fred DeRiggi is the nose guard. George Rooks and Rob Burnett, the All-American, the defensive tackles, Alvin Brown and Terry Wooden are the outside backers. Dan Busey and David Favaro, the inside backers. Usman Bari, one of the corners, along with Sean Whiteman. And the safeties, Tim Sanquist and Rob Thompson. to the first down. Bavaro again coming up to make the play defensively. And from where they marked it, what do you think, Kim? I think it's a first down by a half a football. The thing that they don't want to happen. Now, Syracuse's game plan is to take an outside rush five yards deep, contain him, make him run inside, except they have to have people inside. Now, Major Harris great at finding the lanes, great at finding the first down marker, which I believe he did. James Jett in the ball game with wide receivers. You look at Major. Only a Jew. Napoleon looks for a block, and he will be stifled again. Maybe a gain of one. It's Bavaro, number 59. 
also Brown doing a great job with Contain on the outside. You're right, Ron. It was Alvin Brown, number 34, that held that play up. Now, the thing that you need to understand about West Virginia, first down, everybody gets to play. Second down, if they don't gain yardage, if it's second and long, it's major and generally the option, looking to pitch it, looking to make big yardage. If nothing happens there, third down, as we just saw a moment ago, that's Major Harris's down. That's all his, and he goes wild more often than not. Sets in the pocket, over the middle, Rumber inside the 35, and he's down, looking to spot it down at the 35. Good for 29 yards. Stretching the defense, trips right, three quick receivers to the right, to the right of your screen as you look. Major looking to find somebody deep against the two deep. Rembert beats the seam, beats the safety, and Major Harris lays it right on the spot. You wonder why he's up for the Heisman. Because he can throw the ball like that. Nice catch by Reggie Rambert. Also a number one pick in the draft, they say. Okeechobee, Florida. Napoleon. Draw play. Breaks it off right tackle inside the 30 is Busey. The left inside backer is there. You know, Rambert, 6'6", 200 pounds. And the coaching staff says that he just doesn't run over a 4-5. It's everything is under that in the fourth. Those That's long amazing legs. size and speed. You know, the thing is that I find very, very strange and incredible, really, about Reverend, 90% of his patterns are long patterns, and yet they still can't defend the guy. He averages over 18 yards a catch. Option play by Harris, going to keep it. Knocked forward, not going to have the first down. He'll miss it by about a yard and a half. Fred DeRitchie, the senior out of Scranton, Pennsylvania, the nose guard, along with Bavaro, teaming up on the stop. Well, you just saw how to defend Major Harris, and the way to do it is the backside for has to flatten out, and that's what Bavaro did. He came from the side and was able to hit Major without him seeing him. If he sees you, he'll get away from you. Eighth play of the drive. Harris keeps first and ten Mountaineers to the 23. Rob Thompson, one of the first men to grab a hold. Right side of the West Virginia line, Dale Wolfley, number 64, Ratcher, number 67. See Ratcher coming down or Wolfley coming down. Look at this hole, third down. Major Harris is down. Bavaro able to get there with help, but not before he picks up another first down. Now that's two on the ground in this drive for uh, Major Harris. Three carries, 16 yards so far in the ball game for Major. Draw, whips the pass, complete to Moss, is tight in, knocked out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Tim Sanquist finally got over and got him, but that's good for 11 yards. This is what Syracuse wants him to do, but he can do this also. Okay. Major Harris drops straight back, and you can see the tight end Moss, release, he's releasing flat. Sanquist has given him enough room. Rembert had gone deep to clear it out. And you see how much time before Sanquist comes over and makes the tackle. Boss, another first down. Excellent read by Major Harris, something he has improved on throughout the year. Thank you to Rico Tyler. I don't know if he meant to give it to him or not. Almost looked like a broken play. He'll pick up a yard. Terry Wooden, a very highly considered outside linebacker, knocked him down. A yeah, very subtle play by Terry Wooden, but something that I think you can tell what a great player he is. Against Major Harris, the play was going away from him. He never moved. He waited for the play to come to him, and he was alone with Major Harris and was able to make the tackle. That's a great play by Terry Wooden. Second down. This is the 11th play of the drive. Harris lobs it out. Rico Tyler. He will not score. They're going to mark him down at the one-yard line. Well, this is what drives the defensive secondary and linebackers absolutely nuts. Right. That's a great observation. You don't know whether to go to your zone and cover it. You don't know whether to cover man-to-man. -man. See, you can see right here. You have no idea where to go. Now, look at Harris. Is he going to run? No. He's going to throw it to the fullback, who is really, historically, the toughest guy to cover out of the backfield. And look at Rico. Loose. Secondary down to the one. Tyler, and he is banged down hard. And now a mark 
Parker comes in. Alvin Brown is the first man to hit him, number 34. Face mask against the Orangemen. Yeah, that was a, just a, just an accident there, Ron. I think it, it came with the hit. Everybody was there. Alvin, number 34. Let's watch him. From inside out, can't tell. It happened right there. There it is. From another angle. Favaro, they're sealing it. And then, yeah, just grabbing, grabbing for anything you can get. Winds up with the face mask. Tough break on a good play for Syracuse. So the penalty will take it to inside the one. And it is, again, first down. Signal. George Rooks is the man at the bottom of the pile as the Syracuse defense very stubborn inside the one in that first down play. You know, I think what this points up is how valuable Major Harris is to this team. Now here's, a, here's an instance where they need a yard and they're having a tough time getting it. West Virginia lost their entire offensive line, their first three backups last year, and now they need to power for a yard and Major Harris is handing it off and they're having trouble getting it. Look for them to go outside with Harris on an option here. Second effort, did he get in? And no. David Favaro this time. It is third down, and if you take away the face mask penalty, it would be fourth. <laughs> okay, goal line defense. You have to get low, pile it up, and your linebackers have to make the play. Look how low the orange hats are. There's no place to jump. Look at Favaro. Favaro way over top. Whoops. From behind, now you're in his helmet. You're going to make this tackle. Tremendous job by the guys up front, burrowing underneath, piling it up. Bavaro makes the hit. Look out, Major coming to the left, the wide side of the field. Harris on the keeper. Touchdown, Mountaineer. Well, if ever, I don't know what the score of this game is going to be at the end, Ron, but ever, if ever there was a vote for a Heisman, they can't get in on three straight dives. I call the play. He's going left. And watch him. Look at the strength of this guy and the speed. He takes it in, and that's why Major Harris now has 22 of the 40 touchdowns has been responsible for for West Virginia. Great play. Brad Carroll, 35 of 37 on the year. Points out there. Is perfect. So with two minutes 45 seconds left in this opening period, two possessions and two scores, seven to three, West Virginia on top. Don't get a win. <laughs> Major Harris that he has just scored the opening touchdown of the evening for his team, the Mountaineers, seven to three, with just under three minutes to play in his opening period. Here's a look at the scoring drive, 701 used by the Mountaineers. 78 plays, 13, or 78 yards, 13 plays. And Major gets the touchdown. And let's see, for him this year rushing, that's his sixth touchdown. He has thrown for 16. Five carries on the drive, good for 18 yards for him. As you take a look at uh, Kadri Ismail, number 45, along with 33, David Wheeler. West Virginia's kickoff team for some reason. So Pittsburgh shattered the confidence of both of these football teams early on, yeah, you could say. Yeah. Line drive kick. Ismail watches it go over his head and out of the back of the end zone. Seven to three, West Virginia on top. We're gonna go away for a moment. We'll be right back. Tonight with light sweaters or just uh, just shirt sleeves on. We dodged the bullet, we're indoors. <laughs> Makes to Kennan with the option. It pitches it back to Owens. Goes for a couple. Loses the football out of bounds. And they're going to spot it back inside the 20. Ronaldo Turnbull is the man who hit him. Ronaldo, Ronaldo Turnbull is a player from the Virgin Islands. He was discovered by a basketball coach in West Virginia. Now watch him play this. He's known for his pass rush. Look at the feet. Never crosses over. And he's going to run Owens down and strip him of the ball or cause him to fumble. That's a pretty good play for an outside linebacker. He kept the quarterback, made the quarterback pitch, ran down the running back. Loss of a couple on the play. 
And if West Virginia can get Shar to hold on to it that long every time, that option's going to die. Yeah. Play action, drills it over the middle, has Moore at the 45-yard line. Rob Moore, 27 yards. Thing to remember, this second half team of Syracuse, second half of the season is a different team. And one of the reasons, Bill Sharp, fifth in the nation in passing efficiency, and Rob Moore, a guy who's not afraid to come over the middle and catch a ball. When you can throw a ball like that and have a receiver go down and catch it, you've got a potent offense. Boy, they're really working hard against Darrell Fultz at number 23, that uh, corner on the far side. Bacon to Kennan. Shar pitches it back. Ball is knocked down the field. It is loose. Shar makes the recovery inside the 30. I hate to jump on the youngster's case, but he's doing just what West Virginia wants. He's either got to turn that up or make the pitch. Well, you're right. He should have turned it up. It's a bad decision. Are you going to see some people pull for Syracuse? This is never there. Turnbull again doing a great job. 87. Now, Shar should never pitched it. Everybody was there. They're in the short side of the field. There's no place to go. Owens had to be watching because he was covered. He couldn't have had both eyes on the ball. Shar needed to eat that, turn it upfield. That's a loss of 16 on the play. It's something that Syracuse, if there's any downside of what's happened with them in the last five ball games, they have put it on the ground too much, their coaching staff said. Gonna be sacked at the 25-yard line. Scott Summits. That's a loss of four. And now the Orangemen looking at a situation as Shar has injured his right hand. He has come to the near sideline, and I think the call is going out for Mark McDonald, the sophomore out of Spring, Texas. Yep, number six. Well, you talk about passing efficiency, and Shar has had a great year. McDonald has completed 74% of his passes, 62 attempts, 46 completions. This guy is very accurate. They're going to go with a quick kick. Owen straight in the air. West Virginia has run away from it. Now takes an Orangeman bounce inside the 35, and they get it down at around the 33. 42 yards in the kick. So Syracuse with a quick kick. Well, it reminds you of a bud in the days of Oklahoma, right? <laughs> the Ben Schwartzwald. <laughs> Tyler, no place to go on the left side. Tries to get outside on the right. He maybe has one. As Sanquist from a strong safety position makes the hit on it. Also Thompson off the bottom of the pile. Dan Busey, senior out of Minter, Ohio, as the clock runs down, and as we look at Bill Shar and his injury to his passing hand, that is the end of the first period with the score. West Virginia, 7-3. to three. Being taken up the tunnel, they are going to examine that right hand. You can see they've got it bandaged. Kevin, look at the play. Can you see what happened? No, I think it's blocked. We looked at this replay. I, I think it must be a helmet. As he goes down, we're blocked. View right there. It must have been injured right there. Got it caught on something and managed to recover. I don't know in a few moments. Second quarter underway, 7 to 3. Mountaineers on top. Out of the backfield. Complete to Napoleon. Across the 40. Out near the 45 yard line. Good protection on that play for Major Harris. Now remember this offensive line for West Virginia really has a tough test. Not only do they have to block for him, they're never sure he's behind them. When they drop and they make a pocket for him, they don't know whether Major's going to sit in that pocket as he did on that play or take off. And what they need to do is react to the defensive lineman. If the defensive lineman try to go left, that means Major's going left and they need to mirror them. Napoleon, little stagger step. He's going to be grabbed around the ankles by Fred DeRitchie, the nose guard. He'll pick up a couple and that is it. Nice job by George Rooks. George Rooks made him go inside where DeRitchie was waiting for him. Number 91, George Rooks. Sophomore. Hasn't had a great year, but he's getting better all the time. 
Good look at David Bavaro there. And of course, if you ask the question, yes, it is his older brother who plays tight end for the New York Giants. Short drop this time. Now he extends a great protection incomplete. That's Dice over the middle at the 45. And if you want to know if Major Harris can rip it for about 20 yards on the line, this is a good example. I want you to watch me. Watch Major in the pocket here. Watch how impatient he is. He looks like a guy ready to just blow his stack. He wants to throw this so badly. Look at him. And ah, he throws it as hard as he can. That's not his game, folks. His game is to be on the run. Harris under pressure. Now gets it away, and it's overthrown. Looking for Chen down the far sideline. That is the kind of play that normally Harris kills you. But throw it against the grain, that was a tough throw, particularly 40 yards downfield. What a move, huh? What a move he put oh. on. A lot of people think that Major Harris will be a running back in the pros because he is such a great running back. A little short for a quarterback. Greg Walker, the deep man, number 17. This is uh, Herzog's kick, and it's a beauty. Deep back runs away from it, and it is into the end zone for the touchback. 53 yards in the punt, and let's check the storyline of this one. As West Virginia leading in the ball game. Liz Major Harris is trying to reach out and touch someone there, I guess. Mark McDonald, a fine quarterback, an option quarterback from Spring, Texas. He can run. Owens. You can hear a good pop up here, just a couple of yards picked up on the play, and then that entire front is Herring, Ellis, and also Gray stepping up to make contact with him. Coach Mack, four and four with his good friend across the way. Don Nealon, hard to believe we asked them both, you mean you really don't talk about football when you get together with the family? They said, no, we just don't. In play now he's going to throw off that complete to Moore breaks it off one tackle he's out to the 35 and Steve Grant saved what could have been a very long gator it's good for 14. Well this is a very tough play to defend against they're running it into the boundary with an option look now watch Waters number five he's going to stay off of Moore the force Turnbull's the force on the outside Moore just playing deep kind of like a safety McDonald delivered the ball very well there just when he had to, and it's a first down for Syracuse. That's why their efficiency is so high. That is a new single season record, his 48th reception. Owens, left side. Good contain by West Virginia. He wanted to take it to the outside, and they had too many bodies here as stepping up first was Skip Fuller, number 84. Owens is a guy that is very underrated. In fact, we haven't heard that much about nationally. But he's a senior, and he'll play in the NFL, won't he? Yes, he will. You notice the number. You get that number around here, and uh, you're a pretty good player. Yeah. yeah. down from behind by Grant and you can see who was standing right there Turnbull has not moved just waiting for the for the quarterback to either commit either pitch or take it at him this guy's a great player we talked about him earlier now number 87 he's just going to sit there and he's going to make McDonald make a decision but look at Grant Grant's reading it from the inside Turnbull's keeping it inside a tremendous team defense for West Virginia Ronaldo Turnbull didn't make the tackle but he made the play third down they need the 46. Under pressure, and he'll be sacked. Ronaldo Turnbull. And just what his coaches said, he lives for third down. Case in point, right there. They're going to have to do one of two things. They're going to have to block this guy, or they're going to have to run right up inside of him or at him. If they don't do one of those two things, He's going to be all over him all night. Ken Hawkins with an average of just over 40 per kick, his longest at 58 this year. 
And a kick it away to James Jett. First kick tonight was good for 42. Wobbly spiral as Jett on the run at the 27. Runs out of bounds just across the 35-yard line. And let's take a break. 41 on the kick, 10 on the return. West Virginia leads. Pitch to Napoleon. Rico Tyler in front trying to block as Bavaro will catch him from behind as he goes across the 40. One of the things that West Virginia wants to do offensively is they want to find Terry Wood, number 90. Excuse me. And when they do that, they're going to try to either run away from him or they're going to run right at him. The worst thing you can do is got to run half line away from him where his pursuit. He's a great pursuing linebacker. Let's watch Terry Wood see what they do to him. We've got Bavaro unofficially with seven tackles in the game so far. Napoleon. Well, you can see that quick step. Breaks off a tackle. He is close to the first down. And from where they have spotted it, it would appear that he does have it. Well, ESPN's College Football Saturday kicks off every week with this group at 11.30 Eastern Time. Bob Carpenter, Vino Cook, and Lee Corso, they'll preview what's coming up in the day in college football. And at 3.30, it's CFA football with Johnny Majors and the eighth-ranked Tennessee Volunteers traveling to Lexington for that annual battle with the Kentucky Wildcats. 3.30 Eastern Time this Saturday. We've got a report on Bill Shar, the injured quarterback for Syracuse. It's his thumb. They've taken him to the hospital for x-rays. That oh appears he will be gone for the game. Alvin Brown checks back into the lineup. As Garland Hawkins comes out. Now that is indeed bad news for the Syracuse Orangemen. And he was off to an excellent start throwing the ball. He was four for four. Alvin, excuse me, Alvin Brown, uh, Ron, is a rush linebacker, not a cover guy, so they're expecting run. Harris reverses it out, gets it away, and it is incomplete as Adrian Moss couldn't hold on. David Bavaro again has the cover. This guy's a great player. Okay, here's Wood, and here's the draw drag pattern. You have to hold this guy at Moss, but Bavaro doing a nice job. Boy, that's a terrific job of coverage by Bavaro, and they also had Alvin Brown up in Major Harris's face. Making, making a force that throw. Nice play by David Favaro. Seven tackles, and then that play on cover. Harris, under pressure. Out steps him, takes it down to the 45. It's going to be a third down. They'll still need about three yards. Tim Sanquist finally stopped it. One of the things that West Virginia does that's so unusual, they will block to the side of the option. It, this is to keep people off of Major Harris. Now, Terry Wooden is the man in question here. Watch how they get him tangled up just enough so he can't get his hands on Major Harris. Harris makes the corner and then upfield for a gain. And that's a philosophy now. Keep him off Major Harris. Give him time to make a decision. Harris out of the backfield. Then Napoleon tried to run with it before he caught it. And he was open. So that means Herzog will come on to kick it. Seven to three, West Virginia leads. Well, Greg Walker looks up at this one again. It's five yards deep in the end zone. 45 yards in the punt as West Virginia continues to lead by four. Buddy in America, a happy Thanksgiving. Now there's his mom, Carolyn. Terry Wooden, a senior out of Hartford, Connecticut, and the pros like his abilities. So does his mom, and she has had a special message for the uh, for the agents who have tried to come around and yeah. hinder this young man or try to uh, to bother. There's nobody home, says Carolyn Wooden, and there's JoJo Wooden. Uh, he's uh, the younger brother and also the son of Carolyn, and uh, he will be taking over for Terry when he leaves. Donald with the play action. Sets deep to his running back, Owens. 25, 
30 to the 32 as Chris Herring makes the stop, but it's good for the Orange first down. That's a good, safe pass to get him started with. Well, the play action was to Owen. They faked it to him in a very tough play for a linebacker. Once he doesn't have the ball, your attention shifts back to the quarterback. By the time you can reassert yourself and find out where he is, he has the ball. An excellent call, as you said, Ron, for a young quarterback. So he's completed the first two for 25. The fullback, Kennedy. Big hole over left guard out of the vicinity of the 45 yard line, and Preston Waters had to save it all. This is an unbalanced line here. Watch 84, the backup tight end, Chris Gedney. It's unbalanced to the left. Here comes Gedney right off that left side like a tackle, blocking down on the inside linebacker, and bang, loose up the middle. West Virginia did not adjust to the unbalanced line. Keep it. Maybe goes for a yard, and that's about it. Now a marker comes from downfield as Chris Gedney was blocking on Turnbull at around the 50-yard line. Let's see who it's against. Personal foul against Turnbull. Chip Bull. 15 yards stepped off down to the 40 yard line. In fact, just inside. Well, the Orangemen trailing by four. That's big. Started out like it was going to be a 50 to 49 game. West Virginia came into this game with 59 penalties for 470 yards on the season. Option. They're going to throw it this time. Carpenter inside the 30 to the 28. 12 yards of the play. There's no accident that McDonald can play. Remember, he's completing 74% of his passes. Again, you have an unbalanced line here. Gedney, number 84, is the last man on the line like a tackle. They're giving McDonald plenty of protection, enough to get the ball to Carpenter. West Virginia, remember, giving him a lot of heat on the pass rush, but now they've gone to that unbalanced line, and it seems to be helping. Drop this time, quick out, Carpenter gets a move on at the 10, out of bounds, first and goal at the 9. You hear about Rob Moore, but Rob Carpenter was a transfer from Notre Dame. This ball is a long time in the air, but watch the move. Giving ground over the back and loose in the secondary. And Herring again, tremendous inside linebacker, Fulton number 23. Made the commitment, Carpenter beat him. Two tight ends. First and goal at the nine-yard line. First down average. The orange now over five. Owen looks for a block. Has it. He'll score. West Virginia needs to shift against the unbalanced line. They're outmanned on that side. Biscop trying to make it a 10 to 7 ball game. Six minutes, 16 seconds left until halftime. And the Orange Bunny have the whole counters up and cheering. West Virginia, watch the two tight ends on the other side, Andrew Dees 
and Chris Gedney. They're going to shift. Now, there's a split end out of your picture on the right. Makes these ineligible. It's an unbalanced line left. Strong set. Too many people. They block Turnbull out. There's nobody there. And Owens runs over a man to get in there. Well, here's the scoring drive, and very impressive with a young quarterback. It's six plays, 80 yards, just under two minutes. And Owens with the nine-yard run. There is Bill Scharr. He is back from the locker room, and you see what appears to be what's well, an ice pack that they have taped on there. And he is talking to young Mark McDonald, who is only a sophomore out of Spring, Texas. And he's the man that engineered that last drive. Well, you made a point, I think, in the break when we were talking. McDonald seems to be much quicker than Scharr. The whole tempo of the Syracuse offense the has rhythm. picked up. Yeah. The rhythm seems to be there, where Shar is a better go to the pocket and throw the ball. John Biscop to kick it off. 10-7, Syracuse leads. Just over six to play until halftime. Told you it was dessert time. Yeah, and it's good, too, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's going to be a whale of a ball game. Going to come down to James Jett at the four. Caught from behind as he gets out to the 30-yard line. Reggie Terry on the special teams. Well, they're not in 30 Eastern time to get that done. The Crescent Rams. City's not always the easiest place to play. The Rams owe a few teams after that uh, streak they had. They lost a bunch. Yeah. Option. Harris will keep it, turns it up, has five, has ten, steps out of bounds across the way after a gain of 12. Shia West Virginia offense geared around Major Harris. When they have a bad time, they get behind. They'll go right to Major Harris, and on that play again, they will block at the corner, give him time to make a decision. As you can see, he usually makes the right decision. Seven rushes, 38 yards. Major's one of those kind of guys that the defense comes back over to the sideline and says, but only one guy made a mistake, but that's the one that cost you a 70-yard touchdown. Makes the deep draw. Step it up, drills it, has Rembert, and he trapped it. Nope, couldn't hold on. Reggie Rembert. Usman Barry was covering on the play, a freshman out of Montreal. The reason Barry is in the game is because he's taller. They had a problem. Uh, Greg Walker's only 5'8". Greg Walker, right, was 5'8", and uh, as you see, Harris, the reason they have... Uh, Barry in there because he's taller and a little bit quicker and against Rembert, the very tall and very quick wide receiver, they wanted a fella in there that they felt could do the job on. Him. Harris brings it out. Bavaro in pursuit. Has a piece of it and he'll bring it out to the 50-yard line as Busey comes over to help out his fellow middle linebacker. He's going to be shy of the first down by a couple. His two inside linebackers for Syracuse are really terrific players. Busey injured his arm on the last series for Virginia. And they take the elbow. And he's been a little slow in getting up the last couple of times. Third down. Gets by Busey. Turns it inside. The finally pushed out of down at the 33-yard line. Again, the blocking at the corner. I want you to watch Terry Wooden. He was the guy, number 90. Now, this is the player that could have made the play. Terry Wooden, but look how they load up on the corner. They just get enough of them to slow him down. And now the strength of Major Harris on the corner. Every defensive player's nightmare, Harris on the perimeter. Nine carries, 62 yards. It's a great point you make as you look at Wooden. You can see that Busey said, I've got the angle on him. All of a sudden, he's got still another speed, another gear. Napoleon fumbles the ball, scramble for it at the 31-yard line. I think he made his own recovery. Boy, that ball bounced right back to him. This is the problem that West Virginia had against Rutgers, putting the ball on the ground. Eugene Napoleon, a great year last year. Remember, he's a transfer from Pitt. But this year, he has not run for all that much yardage. Now, he's got a big hole. Alvin Brown again, playing a whale of a game, gets his hand on the ball, but 
a hand on the ball like that against the ball carrier should not pull the ball loose. You have to learn to carry it a little bit tighter. He gets a lucky bounce, still West Virginia's ball. Fakes to Napoleon. Pump gets it away, has his tight end Moss out of the flat. My goodness, he is going down to the turf. Syracuse is about to poke out their chest and say, Freddie DeRitchie, you got him, and he throws it complete. Well, they got him. They just didn't get him with the ball in his hand. You see a little, little argument here. Major Harris, why is he a Heisman candidate? He was looking for Rember down the middle. It was open for a while. He's going down. This ball is not really all that accurate. It's a pretty good catch on the other end, and a tremendous effort by Major Harris. That's his first away. completion after five misses. Third down conversions. This is Harris today. Wanted to run a quarterback draw, and he will have the first down. Terry Wooden finally corralled it. He was dead in the water for a loss. <laughs> you know why he's so tough, and all great backs are tough this way, He's a back that you can't attack. If you attack him, he's gone, so you have to wait for him. When you wait for him, he will lean forward on you. You, get, you don't get the great contact when you make the tackle. Wooden had him around the leg. He fell forward and picked up the first down. He didn't run for it. He fell for it. See Syracuse shifting on defense. Napoleon gets the pitch, turns it up inside at the five, and he is down at the one-yard line. 19 yards, and it's Brown who saved the touchdown. Well, I tell you, talk about a north-south runner. I don't think, I don't think this guy has one swivel in his hips. Here comes Napoleon, and he sees the hole, and he can smell the goal line. Nice move there, and now he's just pushing. Yeah, it looks to me like he might have been in, huh? Yeah, it looks very close. He certainly was closer than that, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, I think so. So the faithful from Morgantown who have journeyed here to Syracuse up and waving their banners in the far end zone. Well, this game is no more than a fist fight. These guys are really battling out here. Now, they had problems going straight ahead on the last time they were down here, remember? So they pitch out wide and they're using that speed against Syracuse on the corners. It worked for Major Harris and it worked again for Napoleon. Brad Carroll knocks it through. 37 of 39 of the year. Come on. Watch number 64, Dale Wolfley, against number 55, Busey, the linebacker. Nice block there. Doesn't allow him to fill or flow to the outside. Only able to walk in for a touchdown. Uh, West Virginia answered right back. So coming up at halftime, we'll uh, go back to our studios. Chris Fowler will get you caught up on today's NFL action. And uh, Dennis Erickson will join Chris, and he'll talk about Miami's big showdown with Notre Dame this Saturday. And also, Kevin and I will be back here in Syracuse to uh, have an in-depth look at the Heisman candidates on this final weekend before the ballots go out next week. Well, what do you think Dennis Erickson is thinking about tonight? He had two really big games this year. I guess you would call them Florida State. We had that one, and he lost it. Now Miami and uh, Notre Dame coming up this weekend. A game I think they have to win. You know, you can you can see those kind of games. You can watch them on television. Drop one to Florida State. He knows he needs to do well against Notre Dame. Yeah, he, he can have them all forgetting Florida State in a hurry if he wins Saturday, though, right? Yep. Line drive on the ground, and it gets by Ismail. It is going to go out of the back of the end zone. Here's a look at that scoring drive. Nine plays, 70 yards, 318, and Eugene Napoleon with his third touchdown rushing this season. 14 to 10. Mountaineers on top. Stay here. Coach Mack. <laughs> you hear the conversation with Walker and Ismail as the ball got through them. You know, I think this man is, is maybe a little misunderstood. On the sideline, he looks, he comes across as very gruff. We talked to him about I that. I told him before. that, didn't I? Yeah. And, and absolutely one of the nicest, sweetest guys yeah. you'd ever want to meet. I thought he's a miserable, mean man, he looked like. I did a game in the ACC. <laughs> but he's not. He's not. He's a terrific guy. Great guy. 
straight ahead. Kinnon takes it for a couple. Now Syracuse thinking that they might cross up West Virginia just a bit, looking for the outside play, but everybody stayed at home. And it's going to bring down a second and long situation. Well, I think that, that they don't want a steady diet up. They don't want second and long. No, no. Very, they are very diversified, and tonight West Virginia has not allowed them to be diversified. They need to establish themselves on first down, and now look out for Rob Moore or Carpenter. Those are their two strengths. McDonald has it on the hit. Has to hurry, and it is caught. Rob Moore, the man that Kevin was just talking about at the 43. Folks, these two wide receivers are something special for Syracuse. McDonald doing a nice job, too. They really are. They're among the two best we've seen all year. Now, watch watch McDonald, the young quarterback. Just over 60 uh, attempts so far. He's going to get clobbered. Look how he lays this thing low in the middle of the zone. No one could have caught that but Moore. And usually, when no one else is available, Moore will pick it up. Two minutes left until halftime. Turnbull coming from the outside. They set screen to that side of the field. Needs a block, and Kennedy is going to be caught. Oh, my, what a play by Herring. And if he doesn't make the tackle, there's a lot of yardage down the sideline. In all the years that he has been at West Virginia, Chris Herring has never missed a practice for a game. Coach uh, Nealon was telling us he would have liked to have redshirted him as a freshman. They needed him to play. He played. He's only been there four years, and he said... Chris Herring had one more year, and from a year to mature, he would be among the best, if not the best, linebacker in the country. The option. Now he wants to throw. McDonald will keep it. He'll only pick up. Well, may, he may just get back to the line of scrimmage. And Owens jumps in and says, let's call a timeout to stop it with 105 left. So let's take the break with him. It's got to be a third down for the Orangemen. They need about three. We'll be right back. 89 and a great ball game. West Virginia up by four. McDonald rolls it out this time. Hurdles a man and he'll have the first down. Whoa. <laughs> Drum goal is the man who got up underneath him, but the youngster got the, the first down. <laughs> Mark McDonald. Nearly a 14-foot pole vaulter in high school. In case you were wondering, he didn't have the pole, but he got about halfway there on that play. Got a couple of timeouts remaining. Gonna go long, and he is looking at the five-yard line for more. No marker. Preston Waters, the best of the defensive backs for the Mountaineers, was the man with the cover on him. Preston Waters just coming back from a pulled hamstring. Now, this ball's a little bit underthrown. You can see more. If that ball's thrown to the outside, away from Waters, and a little bit longer, might have been able to make it. That's a tremendous play by Waters covering that's, ground. That's his, great defense. Yeah, his leg is evidently better. Look at that. Without the interference, he's able to get his hand on it. Tremendous recovery. And I'll tell you that more. He's a dangerous cat, isn't he out there? <laughs> Junior out of Hempstead, New York, as you look at uh, Preston Waters. Gets it out of the backfield, incomplete. Very dangerous as Owens, the intended receiver. And out of the zone, Herring, one of those coming up. There was a lot of open room down the near sideline with an interception. 42 ticks left on the clock until halftime. Chris Fowler will talk about today in the National Football League. Dennis Erickson comes on to talk about Miami Notre Dame. And we'll come back here to Syracuse. And Kevin and I will talk more about the Heisman Trophy. Ballots go out next week. Over the middle, caught by the tight end. These down to the 31-yard line. 14 yards. When you look at these films on Monday or when Syracuse does, I'll tell you what Coach is going to say. Coach Mack is going to say 
You never should have thrown that pass, but great pass, great pass. Watch these. He's going to hook up right between the linebackers, and they're all over him. That ball is in there by an inch, folks. Very, very strong running by Dees. Look, you're going to see it from behind the play now. Now this ball had to be thrown right there, or it's intercepted. Don't you ever throw that again? But good play. <laughs> Dees is a great target if you're going to look, trying to get it underneath the zone there at 6'6", 250 pounds. As Mark McDonald talks on the sideline with his coaching staff, George DeLeon, the offensive coordinator. 44. as though they were in the huddle. Make the tackle on McCumming. Boy, that's a great job on defense. Well, you said trick play, yeah, I did, but it was I? not exactly yeah. what... Oh, well. Is Bobby Bowden up here with us? Yeah. If he is, he'd be unhappy. Those usually work for Bobby. Gary McCummings, who runs the 40 in about three days, I think. Number 64. They put the ball on the ground. McDonald put it on the on the ground. McCummings, I think he's supposed to wait like a half a count. McCummings was salivating. He had to get his hands on as quick as he could. Here's McDonald. I mean, he, I mean, he literally put it on the ground. Hey, look at McCummings. McCummings almost took it out of his hand. He couldn't wait. <laughs> well, he, you know. You support, well, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Lyman love that yeah. stuff. <laughs> he's a junior out of Denver. 6'2", 265. One rush, no yards, but coming. I think that's about, that's career rushing, I think, forever now. You know, we're going for a record, I, I believe. If memory serves me correctly, that is our sixth primetime Ruski this year. <laughs> is it? Florida State. Elvin, Elvin, thank you, Elvin. <laughs> yeah, we were all over it, weren't we? Can't fool us for a whole year. Doesn't take us long to look at a horse, <laughs> Caught in a play like that with no timeouts left, it is. Well, if it's going to be a surprise, it has to, to be a surprise, right? Yeah, having to burn the last one because of that. So 26 seconds left until the halftime. West Virginia leads 14 to 10. Your dessert, America. If you want more, you've got him. Rob, the junior from Hempstead, six catches, 124 yards, and the Orange lead with 19 seconds left until halftime. John Biscuit knocks it through, and Syracuse under the direction of a sophomore quarterback. Mark McDonald has gone back on top. Number five, Preston Waters is a senior, the most experienced and the best cover guy in the secondary for West Virginia. And folks, Rob Moore is eating him for lunch. Single coverage, a 10 yard lead and a beautiful pass by McDonald. And the thing that surprises me is the single coverage this late in the half. They have a lot of confidence in Preston Waters, but he is up against what may be the best receiver in the country and a tough pass to catch because he was that far ahead and had to wait for it and cradle it right inside the end line. And how about this young man, a sophomore out of Spring, Texas? <laughs> uh, yeah, hook, uh, hook them horns. How do you say that? It's a hook them horns. Oh, hook them horns. Yeah. He's from Texas. He thinks he's in Austin. Yeah. <laughs> Ball. It's going to be picked up by Jeff. Tries to get outside at the 31 yard line. Now 13 seconds left. 21 yards on the return, and I would remind you that it was against Pitt over in Morgantown that with about this amount of time left on the clock that Major Harris took his ball club down and they scored just before halftime. Well, there's no question that there's two things that can happen here, and, and I would let 
the worst of it would be a touchdown pass. I'd let Major Harris run from here to Kingdom Come before I would let somebody like Rembert, as tall as he is, deep in the secondary. Major under pressure. Going for Dykes. Almost intercepted. Sean Whiteman had a hand on it. Four seconds left until halftime. The defensive secondary for Syracuse at times looked like a baseball outfield. They were out there. They yeah. were all out there. It's a three deep across. You see the three dropping back. Rembert on the near side here had some room on the outside. You wonder at this point Harris was being pressured and he overthrew it. It could have been intercepted. But uh, Syracuse playing very, very deep. Let's see how far Major can throw it. And they're set up with Hail Mary. You see the three receivers on the near side. He's going to let it rip. Dykes goes up for it. Tip back. And it is halftime. They're on their feet here at the Carrier Dome. And why not? Syracuse, 17. West Virginia, 14. Let's go to Chris Fowler. Late in the season. This week, we took an informal survey of former Heisman Trophy winners, all of whom have a vote in the race, and we learned that Anthony Thompson, among those that we surveyed, has a slight edge, but that Tony Rice's game against Miami this Saturday is huge. If he is a big game, he might have the edge. Let's go back to the carrier down map for the second half. Ron Franklin and Kevin Kiley also have some thoughts on this year's Heisman Trophy race. Fellas? Thanks, Chris. 17 to 14, our halftime score. We've got a great one to 14 ball game. And in fact, we'll check those individuals for major in just a moment following the kickoff as Biscop has it teed up at the 35 yard line. Good house on hand on this Thanksgiving evening. The last one of the 1980s. To see the Orangemen, who have one more game left after this one. Next Tuesday, they leave for Japan, where they will take on Louisville. We're underway in the second half. Going to come down to Jet at the two. 25 tries to get outside, and he'll make it just across the 25 as Garland Hawkins on the special team. Here are the first half stats. Syracuse, 191 passes. You'd almost think that would be flipped. But young McDonald did a great job, and in total offense, 229 to 179. I think a key is Harris has 67 yards rushing in the first half, but just 5 for 13 for 70 yards passing. I'll tell you, the Heisman Trophy for Major Harris is on the line in the second half. Quick out pass, Rimbert. Across the 30 to the 35, Usman Barry makes the stop. First half possessions for West Virginia. 14 plays and they scored 78 yards on the opening drive. Then a couple of series punt, punt. Then nine plays, 70 yards and a touchdown, and then two in halftime. Straight ahead, Rico Tider breaks it out. Has the first down at about 15 more as Rob Thompson from his free safety position finally comes over to make the stop. 17 yards in the play. That's the longest run from scrimmage for West Virginia tonight. And an impossible down to cover if you're Syracuse. Second and short with Major Harris. Here's your inside backers. Bavaro 59, Busey 55. Bavaro misses the tackle. Busey meets the guard. He's out of the play and it goes all the way to the safety. Over the middle, it's Rembert inside the 30, down to the 20-yard line. They had him surrounded just like they wanted. They forced him up into the pocket, and he still can break your back. All right, one of the problems there that uh, West Virginia, the Mountaineers have not been throwing on first down out of the drop back. Remember, the first down is their power, their power down. They went, Rembert was wide open the entire play in the middle of the field. Good job from the pocket for the major tonight. Straight ahead, Rico Tyler again. He'll take it for a couple. 
as West Virginia indicating they want to keep Syracuse a little more honest in the middle, running the fullback a couple of times in this series. Well, what they're doing is they're changing up their tendencies. Don Nealon been around a while at West Virginia. He understands tendencies, and he knows that his team is considered first down power, second down option, third down, whatever Major Harris can get. He's changing it up. Option by Harris. Phil Keith. Good, solid stick. Busey and Bavaro, the two inside backers, come up to sandwich him at around the 13. Well, there's your second down option again. And what they do is they make sure that Harris has time to run. What has he done on third down? There it is, third nine, two, third goal. Harris, 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 Harris. It's all Harris on third down, and it's third and two. And off the top of the show, you said it. He is their offense. Out of bounds, hard at the 10, but he will have the first down. That's David Bavaro, who came over and smacked him. Terry Wooden. Now, Terry Wooden does a tremendous job stacking this thing up 90, left side of your screen. Watch him get low, get into the block, piles up two men, but where's the pursuit? Got to get the major a little faster. Busey almost there. Bavaro gets there, but not until he gets the first down. I need to force major back. He can't run along the line of scrimmage. He has to go deep. First and goal. Straight ahead with Napoleon on the right side. You can hear the knocking down on the field. Well, half maybe a yard and a half. West Virginia trying to retake the lead in this one. They trail by three. Coach Mack not smiling right now, although his ball club is 5-0 and this year in games that they had led in Hampton. That we can expect him to be smiling in about two quarters then. <laughs> Napoleon. To the one yard line. And again, the youngster appears to have crossed the goal line. And they're going to say, nope, they'll spot it inside the one. Number 64, Wolfie on this. Wolfley, I mean, against Busey. Number 55, getting up into the hole. If you have a guy pulling like that, you need to meet him a little closer to the line of scrimmage. Here you are. You're going to play linebacker. Busey. Wolfley. Let Wolfley get position. Napoleon does a nice job following the block to the one. Harris on the keeper. No, sir. Wooden and Bavaro. Well, the Heisman Trophy definitely attracts a crowd, doesn't it? <laughs> that will be fourth down. He loses a yard on the play, and from the two, Major Harris will go to the sideline, and coming out is Brad Carroll. From this close, has a decently severe angle. It's going to be 19 yards. is on the way and just like an extra point he puts him up and we are tied with 10 minutes eight seconds left in the third period syracuse 17 west virginia 17. And of course ernie davis just one of many great ones who wore this uniform but he won the heisman trophy yes he did it's one of the things that kevin was alluding to that number 44 they normally try to pick out a youngster who they think has the great potential they use it as an incentive thing. Yeah, and they think he's a great one. Of course, Floyd Little, Jimmy Brown, they wore that number. Boy, if I got that number, I would have been good if I'd have had that number. That would have made the difference. That would have been it. I should have wore it under my T-shirt. <laughs> Kick to the far sideline. This is this one. 45 at the 30. Still on his feet. Look out. Breaks it out to the 40. 38 yards. <laughs> the middle name of this family should be returned. Wow. Well, yeah, if you got you got rockets, missile, there they are. 
The rocket, the missile in the middle. Suleiman. And the bomb, yeah, and Suleiman Ismail, and it, explosive is the word. I think that's the thing that, the thread that runs through there. That was an incredible run. Boy, this crowd loved it. So with a tie ball game at 17, just under 10 to play, third period. Here come the Orangemen again. Syracuse goes unbalanced again. Owens on the carry, fumbles the ball, and West Virginia recovers at the 46. Same play that they ran and scored on the goal line. This time, he turns into a fumble, and it is Lawrence Drumgould who comes up with it. This is the 24th fumble of the year for Syracuse. And this is the 13th one that they've lost. Now it is unbalanced, as Ron said, they have an extra man. West Virginia has not stopped it all day. Turnbull occupied, Fox is the one that gets it loose from Owens. And then recovered by West Virginia. Big play after a big run back by Ismael. So let's see if Major Harrison company can take advantage and also grab some momentum. Napoleon, oh, does he get whacked in the middle? Fred DeRiggi. Senior out of Scranton, PA, having a great year. James Jett comes in a wide receiver. It's Dykes and Jett, who were the messengers for the Mountaineers. Great protection, Major for Rimbrick, not the first hop pick. You can hear the reaction of the crowd helping out the officials. Usman Bari with the cover. If you notice something about Harris when he comes off the center, he looks a very slow getting back from the center, and I'm wondering what that does to his receiver's patterns. I mean, he kind of lopes back, and then he begins to look. If you're open quick, he's not going to see you. Harris, 7 of 16, 106 yards. Well, here he comes. DeRidge is after him. He'll turn the corner inside the 35 and steps out of bounds there. Good heaven. Three different people had him, and he picks up the first down. Well, he may be slow getting back from the center, but he sees trouble. <laughs> He's gone. Take a look at a couple of these moves. Blocking on the corner. There goes Rooks. And I watch what he does to DeRiggi. DeRiggi just went through both socks right there. Just ripped the hole right through both socks. And look at this acceleration. This guy's a running back. He's a running back that throws. He's no quarterback. is Napoleon. Cuts it up the middle and there is Busey stepping right into the pocket to knock him down hard. On the last scramble by Harris, officially uh, our statistician has given him 8 forward, 22 backward. 17 apiece with 8 minutes and 38 seconds left in the third period. Well, he'll just destroy your defense mentally. Just, you can be in the best defensive position that you can be as Syracuse was on that play. And just look at 20 yards. Tyler straight ahead. And right guard bounces off Freddie DeRiggi. Is there again to make the stop. And it's going to be a third down Mountaineers. They need the 25. Third down. Scott Parker, as you look at what he's done on third down, Scott Parker, the starter at left guard, has just limped off the field. Frank Morelli is coming to replace him. You have to protect the wide side here. Right up the middle with the running back. They don't go with Major, and Tyler won't have it. Why? Well, why? Why? Why would you do that? Well, now you hear the boost from the crowd. They're going to bring the chain because when Brown hit him, it appeared there was no way. And now from the spotting of the football, he's going to have this first down. Yeah, it's very close. Oh, 
Ooh, ooh. Ooh, Don Neelan. Tough decision here. Fourth down. Well, remember that earlier sequence on the goal line. Now, they had a real difficult time. They Three times they tried the goal line, and they were not able to get there. Don Neelan says, let's talk about it. So there's a timeout on the field, and we are to this calls the Mr. Intensity, a three-plus student in the classroom. And as Kevin said back in the first half, He's never missed a practice, let alone a game. He is a coach's dream. For a linebacker, that's an amazing statistic in four years. Okay, what do you look for? Fourth down and inches. Well, first thing I would try to do is just the snap count. That way you don't have to snap the ball. Try to get him to jump on the snap count. If that doesn't work... John Ray is in the ball game also. At right tackle, the 6'10", 345-pound tackle. That's what I'd look for. Well, they go the opposite way. Harris rolling, and he will have it. Dan Busey made the tackle, but he'll have it by three. The thing about Major Harris that makes him so tough, number one, the line does a great job of keeping people off of him right away, and now he has great lateral speed and the ability to find a seam. Now, this is great defense by Syracuse, but as soon as he has the slightest daylight, he's able to turn that lateral run into an upfield run gets just enough for a first down. And that's just plain athletic ability, Heisman ability for Major Harris. Eighth play of the drive since the fumble just a moment ago. Fake to Napoleon. He's looking for Rembrandt, then goes over the middle, has it to Jet at the 10 yard line and will be stopped at the 11. It'll be just, well, let's wait and see. They're going to be the first down or real close. What I talked about earlier, Ron, about watch him come off the center, how slowly, look at him. He's, he's just kind of wandering around back there. Syracuse is playing outside. See Alvin Brown trying to contain him, playing outside. Brooks is late, and he finds that receiver. It's amazing the way he lopes, get back, and he has that incredible acceleration that scares the defense from even coming near him. Tyler, straight ahead, will have the first down. In the vicinity of the 10 to Richie. Is on the bottom of the stack, had him by the ankles. So it's going to be a first down, and the Mountaineers can pick it up without scoring. We're tied at 17 with six minutes and 22 seconds left, third period. at the five-yard line. He's going to have about five, and it's Busey who put the lumber on him. Watch the Syracuse defense here. They move the tight end to the other side, does West Virginia. Look at Syracuse, shifting the other way. Wooden comes inside, and they're going to run right at him. They get a block, they get a tackle on him, they hold him up. Napoleon gets outside, running to the weak side. Great adjustment by West Virginia. They knew Syracuse would go the other way. to the one-yard line. Rico Tyler, a junior out of Pittsburgh. David Bavaro tripped him. Very close to a first down, but Kevin don't think he has it. No, I don't think, they're not even going to measure this. Oh, okay. yeah. This is where yeah. West Virginia had difficulty last time. And third down, their best play has been wide with Major Harris. Syracuse stuffed it. The last time on the goal line, but they've had success with it all night. Napoleon hurdles, not going to score. Don't know if he has the first down or not. From where the lines were spotty, that he will have a first and goal. Terry Wooden is the man who caught him in mid-flight, and there we, you see, they have the football. And Kev, that's going to be enough for the first, isn't it? Well, I don't know. They're, they're going to have to measure this. This is an incredible play by Terry Wood, number 90. He's in the end zone. Look at that. He's in. Wooden just catches him and takes him back. Now, that ball looked to me like it was very close to the end line, to the goal line. 
Well, for West Virginia fans, it is a first down. And in this third period, West Virginia has dominated possession because Syracuse had the long kickoff return following the score, the field goal. And then they fumbled in the very next play, and the defense had to come back out. They may be a little worried. Tyler. Touchdown, West Virginia. Rico Tyler gets this on his own. Now, this is okay blocking by West Virginia. Pretty good defense by Syracuse, but look at Tyler. He stopped, and look at this. Strong legs, and he pushes his way in. George All Rooks. Effort. Yeah. Rooks had a hold of him. Nice. Couldn't keep him out. Brad Carroll tries to put his ball club up by seven. Don Nalen tied at four games apiece in this series with his good friend from Syracuse. Brown on your right, Terry Wooden on your left, and they're going to take an outside rush on Major Harris and try to keep him inside. And here's Derigi, number 67, who's trying to stay right with Major Harris, and they do it. See how they keep him inside? They have the outside contained, Derigi in the middle, and watch what happens. They've got Major for a second. And he unloads the ball to Adrian Moss for a completion. That is the problem with Major Harris. If you keep him from running, he'll pass. Stop him from passing. Look out, he'll take off on it. Good shot of the Carrier Dome. Syracuse, New York. We mentioned back in the first half, it's, it's been very cool up here for the last uh, three days since snow came in. Temperature at night down in the teens, going into the low 20s in the daytime. But inside, very, very nice. This is a great facility, particularly for this time of year. with a kickoff and it's going to be Ismail five yards deep and he elects not to come out with it so last time he had a 38 yard return this time he will hand it to the official and his ball club will scrimmage from the 20. The defense had to have been getting a little bit tired at the end of that drive. Well, that was a great observation you're right they had been on there for 11 minutes. Gives the ball to his fullback, Kennan, and Steve Grant steps right up into the hole and makes the hit. You can hear the pop. Take a look at Syracuse in their first half possession. So we took a look at West Virginia just a while ago. They scored the first time they had the ball. They wound up kicking a field goal after a 12 play. In a five play drive, punt, the same on the next one. In 80 yards and a touchdown, 80 yards and a touchdown. And a total of 16 plays. Donald turns it upfield, has the first down and more. Steve Grant saves it. This youngster understands the option very well. And he's very quick, a little bit quicker than Char. 69, Mike Bednars on Herring, number 49, number 79. Getting down low, just enough to get Herring out of the play and let McDonald cut back and pick up a first down. Nice blocking by the offensive line. Blake Bednar. Three and a half minutes left, third period. 24-17, West Virginia. McDonald puts it on his hip, and he'll be sacked at the 27. That's Fox number 61 who's on the top of him, and Lonnie Brockman is the man who tripped him up first. Right, what a job Fox did. Fox is pushing all the way in there. He injured an ankle against Rutgers, missed 12 days, and he didn't look like he lost anything on that one. He's out of Akron, Ohio, 6'7", 288 pounds. Syracuse is a very big screen team. They like the screen on first down, but if they're going to run one, this would be the place for it. They set screen to the right. Kennan tries to get away, and he cannot. Mike Fox, the gentleman we were just talking about. There are a lot of guys around that, that are getting a lot of attention from the National Football League. 
the West Virginia coaching staff seems to think he'll play on Sundays someplace and play very well. well he's a senior. A young guy will get fooled by this, but Fox, see, he can feel it. He can feel it, see? He can feel, he can feel the fact that they're not really trying to drive him off the ball. And what you do is you work to the outside, work to the outside. That's what Mike Fox did. He knew it was a screen because he could tell the way he was being blocked. And you're right. That's a guy who's going to be on Sundays shortly. Far side has it complete. That's Owens. Turns it up at the 35. He'll be shy of the first down by about seven yards. Preston Waters defensively. And it is fourth down. They need to get the ball to Moore and Carpenter. They had great success in the first half. They need to get the ball deep to Moore and Carpenter on their next possession. McDonald right there. James Jett goes back as Ken Hawkins comes in to punt. Jeff. Well, Syracuse with a great first half, and here in the third period, their offense has been stymied. And the coverage kick here. Jet on the run at the 27. That is excellent coverage by Syracuse. Montemora is down to make the tackle. Lots of basketball. All that basketball tomorrow here on ESPN. Major Harris gets it to Rembrandt. Boy, was he getting a cushion over there on the far side. Usman Bari was covering him, but not very closely. Now, we've noticed up here, Ron, is that when Rembert splits to the sideline, means Major Harris is going to run the ball usually to that side. He's taking the defense out. When he splits halfway or flexes, it's a pass because it gives him the ability to run an out route and, an, and a post route or a crossing route. So we'll see if we can follow Rembert and see where he splits and what it means. He's coming out a little wider here to the right now. Four catches, 83 yards for him. Harris getting some good pressure from Brown. He lost him, gets it away, and Rico Tyler can't hold on. And Sanquist came up and lowered the boom on him. Whoa. Well, I'll tell you. Oh, my goodness. You know, this is, a, we have a, the greatest vantage point of any of the stadiums we've been in this year because we are terribly close. And that hit is just right down in front of us. That was vicious. I can't believe Tyler never went down. It was a vicious hit. That was a, maybe even more a vicious, uh, a vicious fake. Here we are. <laughs> Here we are right on the line of scrimmage. And as you pull back, I mean, that is the lower section of the stands of the field. This is right back behind. to the left side and there's not much doing as Fred Derizzi is there to grab Napoleon. Napoleon's hurt. He got bent. He got bent, bent back. backwards. Yeah. yeah, he sure did. That was the first true draw that they have that they have. Major run. Harris one yard away from becoming the first quarterback to pass for 5,000 and rush for over 2,000. And that TDR 58, as you look at Napoleon leaving the field, was touchdowns responsible for either passing or running. Napoleon has played very well, and that's a big loss. So Garrett Ford comes in. In fact, Garrett Ford is the leading rusher on this football team, second only to the quarterback. From behind, Wooden, and he gets away from it. With a reverse of the field, and he's close to the first down across the 50. As Greg Walker finally makes the tackle. Scott Parker made a great block to free him up. And Harris is shaken up on the play. It is fourth down, but he was limping. And here comes Wooden on the inside rush, and Harris just feels him like the great, like Grant Parker, like the great quarterback. Watch Parker. 65 made a block in there earlier, and then Harris with the nose for that first down marker. Syracuse with a return on. Fair catch called for, and it is going to go out of bounds inside the 10. And in fact, as they walk it up the field, they're going to mark it now at the 11 yard line. As you look one more time at Eugene Napoleon, that's a 37 yard punt. I beg your pardon, Major Harris. We said a moment ago that he limped off the field.
McDonald pitches to Owens. Takes it right up the middle in the vicinity of the 15 is Skip Fuller. Will end this third period by making the tackle. 24-17, Mountaineers lead. From the Carrier Dome in Syracuse, Ron Franklin and Kevin Kiley as we open the fourth period. Mountaineers by a touchdown. Wants to throw off the option set and pass is incomplete for Carpenter. And he had 25. Lawrence Tumgool draped all over him. Well, he looked like Superman's cape on that one. He was <laughs> he was right on him. Uh, the crowd kind of mumbling here. They need to get the ball to Carpenter and Moore. That, that's the, the bulk of their offense, the big play guys. They're not going anywhere. They're two leading receivers. McDonald's number one priority now. Get it out there. Blake Bednar is number 79, the 303 pound senior. Quarterback draw. McDonald with a dandy move himself. And oh, does he take a hit at the 25? Youngster should have gone down and he couldn't. Mike Fox was spinning him around. Also, Darren Fulton. Well, he laid the lumber to Darren oh, Fulton, is what happened. McDonald delivers this hit. Listen up. Whoa. Thought it was Fox, as we said, who posted him. And Fulton came up and, and polished him off. But it's good for a first down. Owens. That's a great play by Turnbull. Got a hand on the check at 97. It's Brockman, and he was through great penetration. Got a hand on his ankle and stopped that play before it even started. Now Syracuse is having happen what they don't want, and particularly with a sophomore quarterback who has not played a lot. With this second and long situation, West Virginia is making them become more predictable. Yeah, absolutely, and they don't want second and long. But again, they have the great receivers. And they need to get the ball in the hands of either Carpenter or Moore, who's not in the game. Owen, oh, straight ahead. Breaks it open. First down and Moore. Owen's out to the 42. Turn ball on the stop, but it's a gain of 15. Nice job by that inside blocking of Syracuse. Flannery and Bednarz and coming right up the middle. There's some question about Owens, whether or not he can run on the inside. I guess this answers it. Syracuse line definitely dominated on that play, and then Owens in the open field picked up the first down. A guy that needs to have a big game, certainly a big fourth quarter. Short drop by Carpenter, tipped up the line of scrimmage, turn ball. Ronaldo Turnbull is six foot five. Watch him. Now they're going to try to cut him because they know it's a quick pass. Now this is the play. You need to cut the guy on the outside. Watch him protect his legs. Keeps it down. McDonald is just six foot tall. It's a tremendous play, a very subtle play by an outside linebacker. Hold your legs, keep them in shape, get those hands up. St. Thomas, the Virgin Islands. You have to wonder how much football he's got to play down there. <laughs> Give it another guy. McDonald, broken play, and it's going to cost him. It's going to be a third down and 10 as Turnbull is there again for the stop. Well, the difference between the West Virginia offense, the option, and the Syracuse option is they optioned this man, but they're not getting it done. Turnbull too quick. He won't be optioned. He turns it back into Fox. I believe that was Fox. Yeah, it was Fox. The two best players on the defense make that play. Now, West Virginia blocks that corner. They come right out with people and block that outside guy and give Major time to make that corner. Eighth play of the drive. Kevin, third down. They need the 48. Outside pressure. McDonald's going to run. And he has the first down. of the scramble by Mark McDonald. He's doing a major Harris. 
Bring Texas again, an option quarterback in high school, just a sophomore, and you're going to see it. Good blocking by the offensive line, and a great decision here by McDonald. Right there, they have him stopped. He makes the cut inside, and that's what gives him the first down. He finds the seam. Rushing, 10 carries, 33 yards, 126 passing for the youngster. to the near side. McDonald trying to force turn ball. Turns it up. Got a lot of running room. Inside the 15, first and 10 Orangeville. Here comes Mark McDonald with Owens. Does he pitch or not? He's going to get a great block there by McCummings, number 64. McDonald again makes the right decision, and he's down the sideline. For the young quarterback, watch 64, McCummings on 66. Holds that block long enough, and that was the difference for McDonald to get down the sideline. McCumming on Theron Ellis. First and 10. The ball just outside the 12-yard line. And with four seconds... On the 25-second clock, a timeout has been called by Syracuse. So with 11.53 left in the ballgame, West Virginia 24, Syracuse 17, and threatening. With 11.53 in the ballgame, they have a first down at the 13-yard line. Right side with Owen. Runs into his own blocker to see crash into Andrew Dees, the tight end. He will take it down to the nine. Chris Herring on the bottom of the stack. Syracuse inside the five will go to, inside the 20 will go to multiple formations. The reason to try to confuse the opposing defense, in this case, West Virginia. And what they want to do is break a guy open if they're going to pass or get somebody to take the wrong assignment. If they get inside the five, they'll go to the wishbone attack and try to run it in. and Owens has recovered for Syracuse. Oh, my goodness. And it's going to bring up a third down situation. And the new line of scrimmage is going to be at the 14-yard line. Fox again from the backside. They wanted to run the option. And watch Mike Fox, number 61. Takes the gap. Takes the gap right inside the block. That's a great play. And then the fumble on Owens is alert enough to fall on it. That would have been an, just an incredible turnover. Of the situation. Third down for the Orangemen. The ball at the 14. And to keep it alive without having to go for a field goal, they need the West Virginia three. They will run screen from here. McDonald set over the middle. Incomplete in the end zone. Preston Waters had the cover. And you can see Rob Moore. Looked as though he had a step on him. Ball was just a little underthrown. This is excellent coverage, and you're right. The ball, the ball never had a chance. It was underthrown. Waters right on him. And had that ball been thrown up, it might have been intercepted. Yeah, that. Well, that if it's thrown up in front of him, though, he's that's he's got him on his back there. See, he couldn't have cut in front. I don't believe. 31-yard attempts has made one from 24 tonight for Visca. It's a fake, and the pass will be incomplete as the holder, McDonald, got hit just as he tried to get it away. And who was there? Darren Fulton, number 23, along with Leroy Axel. Well, a good call, a fake field goal, except for one thing. West Virginia had their hard rush coming on the block, and there's no way a field goal kicker is going to block these two guys. There was no chance for that to succeed. Good call by West Virginia trying to block it, and Syracuse caught kind of unawares there. Well, I... That about says it all, yeah. doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, just about. <laughs> uh, it's like, mm, yeah. get, that, uh, get the rest of that turkey out of my teeth yeah, here. Yeah, grind a few. And that fake field goal out of my <laughs> teeth, too. Garrett Ford with the carry. He will have a couple as James Wentworth 
comes up to make the stops. Check the storyline as we have just about 10 minutes left in this one. Harris, 221 total yards, 70% of the offense for the Mountaineers. McDonald, 189 total yards, one touchdown responsible for it. Syracuse, four fumbles, one loss. West Virginia, seven points off the fumble. And that's the difference in the game. That's right. 24-17, Mountaineers. Pitch goes to Ford, cuts back into the middle, lost his own footing. Major Harris cannot run. He's really tender, excuse me, <coughs> tender on that leg. He said a thigh bruise. We went back and looked at the play a couple of times trying to figure out how he got a thigh bruise. But you're right, he's really hobbling around. Uh, he kind of walked slow anyway, but I was watching him come off after pitching that ball, and he wasn't running. He's slipping. Now it's his third down, it's Majors down, and we'll see. Back of the pocket, gets the pass away, complete in the near side to Dykes, and he'll have the first down at about 10 more. And that now gives him over 5,000 yards passing. First player in NCAA history. There you see it, 5,000 yards passing and 2,000 plus rushing. And he has a year to go if he stays. All right, now if I'm if I'm Syracuse, I'm looking for the inside running game here. Short drop. He's got Ford in the flat. Pressure is on. Gets it away, and it is caught. That's Jet up at the 50-yard line. I'd say there's no way that he should be able to do this, but he gets it done. That's the strangest throwing motion. And look, you can tell it's not the same Major Harris. They're throwing on first down. He's not going to even try to make a big attempt at getting out of there. Now, look at this throwing motion. Slow, wobbly, and right in the chest. <laughs> Somehow. You notice something when he comes out from under center where he's going to throw? He spins the ball over in his hand. Watch him next I time. will. We'll I'm going to watch play. that. Running play, Rico Tyler. Looked like no place to run. He's going to wind up with a gain of about seven. Dan Busey will get him in one of the few flags that we've had all night. We've got one on each side of the field. Procedure against the Mountaineers. So a race at a good run by Rico Tyler. Well, we haven't had a lot of penalties in this game. Uh, this, has been a, this has actually been a terrific football game from start to finish. Now, Syracuse ha has a really an opportunity here. I'm sure they have noticed that Major Harris does not have the explosive running ability he had early in the game. You have to treat this team more like a traditional team now. They're going to have to make some kind of adjustment defensively to look for screen and draws, straight ahead power, toss sweep, that type of thing. up to make the stop you know they say the mark of a good officiating crew is one that you don't really you don't even realize that they're there and that's exactly what this uh, group has done tonight yeah you're right you know that's a great observation all year we've kind of pointed out some things that we thought were first downs that weren't and we make some but you know, sometimes you don't realize it that you don't say what a great job they do when you're not picking on them but they have done a tremendous job tonight. Michael Simcheski is the umpire in this one uh, William McDonald the referee making the draw now let's see if he can scramble away nope gets it away and he has it complete to Rembert turns it up field and will have another 10 yards down to the 28 yard line 25 yards in the pass play all right this is all time his offensive line does a tremendous job he's hobbled watch the time on the left quarterback release now, two and a half seconds is about right. He has almost six seconds, and Rembert did a tremendous job getting free. Now, watch the linebacker give him a little push here. Watch him work himself free. Hey, looking for that open spot. Major finds it. Five catches, 105 yards for Rembert. Tyler spinning at the line of scrimmage. He'll have one Fred to Ritchie, who has had a very good ball game tonight. Spins him down, number 67. Clock 
clock running, and that's exactly what the Mountaineers want as they lead by seven. They'd love to put some kind of points on the board, but it is now going under six and a half minutes to play. Uh, Bob Syracuse, I'm going to blitz him now. I'm going to blitz him. I'm going to get to him, get him in a passing situation, and come after him because he doesn't seem to be able to run, and they're getting backed up. But the field goal is going to hurt him badly here. Making the draw. Great protection again. It is intercepted by Babaro. to say what the injury is. It's some kind of bruise to the leg, but clearly this is not the same player. Well, how it would affect him pushing off. Z. Bavaro, 59, tremendous job by him getting deeper, working deeper, getting in front of Rembert. Now watch him, he sees, he sees the crossing receiver, the tight end Moss, and he works deeper in front of Moss and makes that catch by an inch. A short pass by Major, but maybe more a better defensive play by Bavaro. Well, Bavaro now with the interception. And he also, we have him for 12 tackles in the ball game. Straight ahead in the running play out to the 10 is Kenneth. Syracuse trying to play it a little close to the vest here with uh, young Mark McDonald. And that man knows that uh, Bill Shar, his regular starter who was injured in late in the first quarter that he can't take any chances but he also has got to keep a close eye on the clock because only 540 to play they have to go downfield and it's got to be more on a post pattern number 14 he is the guy and they're trying to bracket him here on the outside playing him inside outside short deep they have to get the ball away straight ahead with all big opening protecting the football with all his life this time out to the 22 and that'll move the change Now there's Bavaro. He's one of the seniors playing his final ball game here at the Carrier Dome. And that was a simply a sensational interception that he made just a moment ago. All right. Here's where you might be trying to double cover more on the outside here. finally puts a stopper on it. All right, here's what Rob Moore means to this team. I told you they're double covering him. See, here's the double coverage on Moore. Moore's going to take both of these guys to the sideline, and they're going to drop the ball off underneath to Kinnon. This is a good call, but still, with time running out, Syracuse needs to go downfield. McDonald delivers to Kinnon. There's no coverage there. He stumbles a little bit, and here comes the coverage to get him down. put a stopper on him. Kevin, 219 pounds, a junior out of Brooklyn. Boy, now this is an interesting situation. If you get the touchdown, well, it's your, two years it's ago, your best what happened friend, here? It's your best friend. Well, it doesn't matter. It was his best friend two years ago. He went for a two-pointer with 10 seconds left, they and they won 32 to 31. But they were 11 and 0. They were 10 and 0 at the time. <laughs> to Cannon again. That is enough for the first down. Deron Ellis and Brockman combined on the stop, and it's good for 12. It's just, uh, uh, I mean, you don't have to be a, a rocket scientist to figure this out. Rob Moore on the top. And they're not going to let him run the post. You see the safety on the inside, making sure he can't get inside, and then Kinnon. Coming up underneath the coverage. Deron Ellis not able to get there in time. And McKinnon, well, that's a tough runner there, huh? McKinnon has caught 31 coming into this ball game. Got good hands. They're going to run a reverse. There comes the pitch. Moore looks for a blocker. There's not one there. 
breaks off a tackle and he's going to wind up with plus yardage. I don't believe it. What an effort by Moore. Watch number 25 in white. Drumgold makes a great play here. I mean, he's doing exactly what he should do. They almost get to McDonald before the pitch. Now here's Drumgold. I've got the outside. I've got the outside. Oh my. What a fake, huh? <laughs> Talking about putting holes in the end of your socks. And more, and more, oh my goodness. more at the inside. Yeah, you won't see a better play than that. That's a great football player. There. I'll tell you what, we have we have Rob Carpenter also, uh, Rob Moore, and with <laughs> number 88 on the other side of the field and Reggie Rimbert. I think three of the very best in this entire country, don't you? Yes, absolutely. I really do. There's some wide receivers here that'll go in the draft. If Syracuse Tizer wins this game, I believe it'll be the ball will be in the hands of Moore when he crosses the end zone. Guy, he is making every play whether he catches the ball or not. He's dictating coverage, and now they have him in a slot where it's going to be tough to double him. They're taking two with him. Option play. McDonald puts a head down. He's at the 34 yard line. It's Chris Harry comes up from his inside linebacking spot to make the tackle. Watch number 14 here as he crosses the formation. Two men shifting, they run back the other way, away from the defense, and look at the holes it creates. Again, number 14 is running the offense. You remember what they told us? Never has a wide receiver in Syracuse dictated the offense the way Rob Moore does. He is a leader out there, whether he catches it or not. Checking over his list. And he'll check it twice. 18 for 68 yards for Owens tonight. Oh, I thought he got out of bounds, but they said no. Four in the slot. believe was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Carpenter was his intended receiver. Boy, an option pass. It run to perfection. Extremely tough to defend. Most difficult when you're expecting run. It's like it wrong foot you. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Classic Clemson play. We watched them do it twice this year. But at this stage in the game, it's evident that they're going to have to throw the ball and it's less effective. a fine defensive play by Ronaldo Turnbull. It will be third down. And a timeout being called by Syracuse. This means they will have just one left. With 145 left in the ball game, they got to get in the end zone. Virginia leading by seven. And for Syracuse, they have a third down at the 25-yard line of the Mountaineers, and they need the 15. Timeouts remaining. Syracuse now with only one left. They have two plays here. Third down. This is obviously four down territory. They don't need to try and get it all in one. I'm looking for the tight end or the fullback here. We mentioned a moment ago, they do like to throw to 10 at number 43. Blitz up the middle. McDonald gets by one, and he will not get by Fox. What a ball game Mike Fox has played tonight. That's four sacks. Mike Fox playing on an injured ankle all year. Right side of your screen, number 61. Actually double team. Theron Ellis is the one that actually makes McDonald move. And then Fox never stopping. They on one leg. On one leg. Missed 12 days. Injured a knee. So now it's down to this play right here. They want to keep it alive. They must take it to the 15-yard line. 
fourth down Syracuse. Blitz again. McDonald going long. Has a man there. Intercepted by Waters. Now a flag comes down inside the five-yard line. It's going to be taunting. It's going to be a taunting penalty. It's going to cost them a yard, half the distance. I'm going to call it on Waters. Well, I know there are only 53 seconds left, but <laughs> inside your five-yard line, that is that is a very unwise penalty. Well, you know, Mark McDonald has played a tremendous ball game. Yes. Uh, now, uh, now, but this, now this is something that may be a sophomore. This ball has to be catchable. The worst thing it can be is short, and that's what it is. He need he need to throw it up there. He threw it short. Uh, Moore had to come back for it. If he throws it up high, then it's a jump ball. You take this out as you look at McDonald. Feeling bad. Played a great game, though. And, uh, did all that could be uh, could be asked of him in this ball game. 12 of 21 interception, 158 yards and a touchdown for him. And he rushed 15 times for 56. For total yardage, 214 tonight. A timeout is called by Major Harris. When Major Harris had upset on his mind, the Mountaineers led Syracuse 31-24 late in the fourth quarter. Then Don McPherson went to work, and with 10 seconds to go, brought the Orangemen to within one. Showing the tie, Michael Owens ran at the two-point conversion. Syracuse had their perfect season. Well, the stage was set in this one for another miracle finish. I'm not going to be surprised in West Virginia. You think they will take a safety here and punt it away? Nope. Tyler with the carry straight ahead to the four. Well, no, I, I think a safety is, should be in mind, but they won't do it until it's the last play of the game. Timeout called by Syracuse. That's the last one that they have as Major Harris limps off the field. And finally a smile from that head coach right there. Come on, Steve! That offense would like one more chance. And Major will just fall on the ball as Syracuse has no more timeouts. And we'll see when they set the 25 second clock in motion and then the difference between that and the game clock. Hammond was there, it goes. He whistled it in. And it looks like a difference of about four seconds. Well, Major Harris, I don't think he won the Heisman tonight, but he didn't lose it either, so on we go to another week. I think it really depends on uh, what happens this weekend. Well, he had some sensational <laughs> moments. 72% of the offense was for by him tonight. A couple of times when it looks as though he was dead in the water, and he not only got out of it, but made big positives out of it. Clock goes to double zero. And the two good friends in the embrace in the middle of the field. Tough to swallow for Coach Mack as his ball club played valiantly, particularly having to use a reserve quarterback as Mark McDonald and certainly got a lot of attention to the coaching staff. A different, a different Syracuse team than the one we saw earlier in the season. No doubt about it. But I think West Virginia, I think what rumor is West Virginia is going to the Gator Bowl. That's the rumor. Against uh, against Clemson, that's the uh, that's the rumor. It's not official, but that would put us the Mazda Gator Bowl and uh, on the 30th, the 30th, 30th of uh, December. Well, tonight's piece of players of the game are from West Virginia University, Major Harris, and from Syracuse University, Mark McDonald. As part of their continuing development of amateur athletics, Visa, proud to donate $1,000 to each of these great universities and $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team. So our final score, it is West Virginia 24 and Syracuse 17. And a little extra trimmings on this Thanksgiving night. Let's go to Chris Fowler. Okay, thank you, Ron and Kevin. So West Virginia ends up at 8-2-1. They are headed for the Gator Bowl against Clemson. Oh.